Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Aginati Marandasya Gananga Sadakya Chaksurim Miritam Yanatajma Yishigurabe Maha. Sri Chaitanya Manobi Sam Stapitam Yarabhutare Swayam Rupa Karamaya Dadati Swa Paranti Kam. Our topic today is a desire to improve. We all have it. And a very good reason why we all have it is because God put it there. He doesn't want us to get stuck, to stagnate, to sit, soak, and sour as the saying goes. We're created to be constantly moving ahead, rising to new levels, taking new ground. Throughout our lives, Krishna is going to reveal to us various ways that we can become better versions of ourselves, step into the great destiny that he has in mind for us. He speaks to us as the Paramatma, the super soul, from within the heart. He speaks to us through scripture. He speaks to us through the voices of those who love us. God is described, Vedaham Samaditani Vartamani Bhavishanita Mam Dubeda He knows past, present, and future. He knows what's in our hearts. He knows what we need to work on. He knows where the strongholds are. He knows what it is that's holding us back. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our faults. He knows our inner secrets. And guess what? He still likes us. <laughs> when he brings these matters to our attention, then we have to be willing to do our part and take the corrective measures. If you're not willing to get out of your comfort zone, then you're going to remain stuck in a rut in your marriage, in your finances, in your careers, and most especially in your walk with God. If you casually disregard the advice of Scripture, ignore that small voice from deep within your heart or downplay advice from friends and well-wishers, you're not going to become everything that you're created to be. Sometimes we think, well, I know I should forgive that person, but they hurt me so badly. I know I should get into shape, but I just don't seem to have the time. I know I need to quit working so much and spend more time with the family, but I just need that money. I know I should get out of bed earlier, but I'm addicted to late night TV. I know I should go to the temple, but I'm just so tired on Sundays. Can I tell you it's important to heed Krishna or God's promptings for improvement? Everything that he tells you is for your own good. In the Bhagavad Gita, Yatharga Vishamare Parinam Vishna Tatsukam Rajisham Shilam Abna Budi Pashadiham. That which in the beginning is like poison is in the end like nectar. On the other hand, that which is in the beginning like nectar ends up being like poison. Staying the same, not moving forward, settling where you are, it may seem like nectar in the beginning, right there in your comfort zone, but in the end it's like poison. Krishna only wants our obedience for one purpose and one purpose only, so that he can release, he can open the vaults of heaven and shower more of his favor towards us and our loved ones. So ask yourself, are there things in your life that you should be dealing with, but instead you've been putting them off? Maybe you're ignoring his hints about getting your finances in order, cutting back on that credit card spending, some of you ladies, about... Husbands arguing less with your wife, maybe making peace at work with that co-worker. Maybe you need to cut down on the sweets and lose some weight. Maybe during the morning commute, you need to listen to KHQN, 1480 Krishna Radio, instead of that talk show. And maybe you're being here today as Krishna's way of telling you that you shouldn't put it off any longer. You need to pay attention to the tension to what Krishna is saying to you. Anytime you obey the Lord, a blessing is going to follow. You're sowing a seed which will cause you eventually to rise higher and higher and higher. And like with sowing any seed, it's not going to happen overnight. It may take some time. But at some point, in some way, you will see God's goodness to a greater degree. So let me ask you this question this evening. How high do you want to rise? How much do you want to continue to increase? Do you want to see more of God's blessings? And if so, the higher you go, the more disciplined and self-controlled you're going to have to be. The higher you go, the more willing you're going to have to be to follow what Krishna or God is saying. Maybe for some of you, he's telling you not to spend as much time with those friends who are taking 
intoxicants cheating on their wives, cutting corners in honesty. You may want to put it off. Cheru, I've known them since high school. If I don't have those friends, I'm going to be lonely. Well, true, they're good people. Their bad conduct doesn't affect me, doesn't hurt me one bit. Can I tell you? You're playing with fire. The temple president, he's moved on now to Boise. But he had one guy who was coming around doing some odd jobs and a fellow asked if he could borrow the temple car one day. He took it and he brought it back 24 hours later. Next week, he was out driving somewhere. He had a broken taillight. A policeman pulled him over and for some reason searched underneath the front seat where there was a whole bunch of drugs. The guy had borrowed the car, gone out and bought drugs, and he was so spaced out, he forgot to unload all the drugs, left a bunch of... The temple president of the Krishna temple in Salt Lake City almost went to jail. <laughs> so don't tell me hanging out with the wrong kind of people can't bite you back, can't circle around. It. When Lord Krishna asks you to do something, the sooner you do it, the better off you're going to be. We should develop a habit of reflexively, immediately following the instructions of the Lord. We put it off, procrastinate, delay at our own risk. We question the wisdom of the Lord, second guess him, minimize his loving advice at our own risk. You may not want to distance yourself from those friends because you're afraid you'll be lonely. However, the sooner you follow the advice of the Lord and start seeing less and less of them, the sooner he's going to send you much better friends. The sooner you cut down on that bad habit, the sooner the Lord will enthuse you about an exercise program. The sooner you cut out sweets, the sooner you're going to start looking good in the mirror. The sooner you bite your tongue and allow your spouse a last word, the sooner you're going to have peace in the family. The sooner you start daily chanting the holy names of the Lord, the sooner you're going to experience the fullness of Krishna, God's favor in your life. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The longer we delay dealing with the character issue, the more difficult it's going to be later on. You're always a lot better off Heeding Krishna's promptings quickly. The moment you feel the tension, the uneasiness, the moment that alarm starts to sound, you need to move right away to take proper steps. Childlike, we need to get in the habit of allowing the Lord to lead us in the best direction for our life. Now let's imagine for a moment. Let's say someone's on a third floor balcony. They see you walking down the middle of the street. I don't know why you're walking down the middle of the street. <laughs> and they see from the other side of the building a car speeding towards the intersection. The car's not going to stop. You can't see the car. The car can't see you. But you guys are headed on a collision course. And as a pedestrian, you're going to get by far the worst end of that meeting. The person on the third floor can see both. He can see the car. He can see you. And he can see what's going to happen. So if he shouts out to you, jump to the sidewalk quickly. It is in your best interest not to question him, not to second guess him, not to ask him to clarify or to say why, but just do it. Do it. Yield to the person who has the better vantage points. God knows he's in the hearts of all living beings. He knows what your enemies are going to do even before they themselves know it themselves. He sees past present and future. He sees around the corner, down the street, across town. He sees things that you cannot see. He's your well-wisher. If you allow him, he's got your back. <laughs> Therefore, the sooner you learn to trust and obey him, the sooner you're going to be saved from all kinds of dangers. In a purport to verse in the third canto of Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says, quote, a devotee who engages in the service of the Lord is awarded all knowledge necessary to achieve the Supreme. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I heard about a ranger at Yellowstone Park who was leading a group of hikers. He was so caught up in his own rhetoric, telling the hikers about the local flowers and animals, and he considered the static on his two-way radio to be annoying, and he switched it off. It wasn't long afterward before another ranger comes running breathlessly up the path. He said, why didn't you answer our desperate calls on the radio? He says, a grizzly bear has been spotted 
stalking you and your tour group, and we've been trying to warn you. You know, in the same way, whenever we turn off, switch off from the messages that Krishna is sending us, we not only put ourselves at risk, but we also put at risk those who are around us. Have you ever heard anyone say, with tears in their eyes, I knew I should have kept strife out of my family. I knew I should have spent more time with the kids. I knew I shouldn't have been so hard to get along with. Isn't it amazing? We know the right thing to do, and yet still we ignore it. Anytime you made a mistake, think back, and you can always remember that there was a small, still voice asking you not to do it, to control yourself. But you ignored it, you pushed it aside, you overrode it. Now, isn't it amazing? Krishna may be cautioning you in all kinds of ways. Another instance is about your words. Krishna may be asking you not to say so many hurtful, sarcastic, and critical things. You develop a bad habit, and you know it down deep inside. It's hurting your relationships. Well, don't wait for the four alarm siren to go off before you do something. In most cases, Krishna's not going to hit you <laughs> across the head with a two by four and say, hey, you're ruining your marriage. You're going to end up hurt and lonely. No, Krishna's advice is much more likely to come to you like a whisper from a place of peace and stillness. And Krishna has equipped you to handle all things. He's already planted the seeds of discipline, the seeds of self-control on the inside. You just have to water those seeds by chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. I heard about a young man named Danny Simpson. He was short on cash, so he took a pistol that had been handed down to him through his family from generations, and he robbed a bank. His bank robbery netted $6,000, but unfortunately he didn't get more than a few blocks away before he was arrested and put in jail. Now at his trial, two significant things happened. First, daddy was sentenced to five years in prison. The second thing, it was discovered that the gun he used during the robbery was an antique Colt made by the Ross Rifle Company in 1918. Its estimated value was $100,000. Did you catch that? Danny robbed a bank for $6,000, all the while holding a gun in his hand worth $100,000. Now, do you think Danny had regrets? You bet he did. My guess is that if he had to do it all over again, before robbing a bank, he would have taken a much closer look at the family heirloom, which was his by right. Now, what do we learn from this story? Don't miss the treasures right at hand. We have talents, skills, and abilities that have been gifted to us by God. We need to learn how to excavate those. Krishna has already packed our bags for the journey of life with everything we need. He didn't forget anything. He didn't leave anything out. Do you know people who, instead of paying the price to go to the next level, instead of looking in their own suitcase, so to speak, spend all their time and energy being jealous of people more fulfilled, more prosperous than them, rather than being happy for those people and rejoicing, the jealous person spends all their time and energy running others down and finding fault. Now, the interesting thing that I find about this is that those jealous people could have enjoyed the same success, same fulfillment as the people of whom they're jealous, but they were unwilling to pay the price. They were unwilling to make the same sort of sacrifices that had been made by the people of whom they were envious. Now, if we're going to be the men and women that we were created to be, we need to stay open, respectful, be inspired, happy for, and challenged by those who are further along than us. The poet said, the lives of great men 
all remind us we can make our lives sublime and the party leave behind us. Footprints in the sands of time, footprints that perhaps another sailing over life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. Always look for ways to improve. There are treasures hidden underneath complacency, underneath immobility, underneath laziness, underneath envy. In this day and age, I think you'll agree with me, you can get away with a heck of a lot and still live comfortably. <laughs> you can treat people disrespectfully, you can be sloppy in your business and in your domestic affairs, and you can still live comfortably. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about being men and women of excellence. We're talking about rising higher, about being the very best version of ourselves that we can be. And another purport in the Bhagavatam, second canto, Prabhupada says, we have got this rare and valuable human form of life. We should utilize it to achieve the highest level of perfection. That is Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, 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 Rama. One of the most fascinating people in the United States history was a black gentleman from the South named George Washington Carver. He was born into a family of slavery, could have settled where he was, wallowed in self-pity, come up with any number of excuses for not rising higher. However, he never allowed his thoughts or actions to be enslaved. Early on in his life, he had a deep belief that God had something special for him to do. Eventually, he became a chemist who specialized in agricultural products, and his work ended up helping the South move from dependence on one single crop of cotton to include diversified products. He called his laboratory God's Little Workshop. He often was heard to be carrying on conversations with the Lord inside of his shed there. Story goes that one day, George was in the workshop and he said to God, Lord, tell me the purpose of the universe. God said, that's too big a question for your little mind. Reduce the scope of your question. Carver then said, all right, Lord, tell me the purpose of mankind. God said, no, that's too much. Just reduce the scope of your question. So it went on and on, back and forth for a while. And finally, Mr. Carver said, Lord, tell me all about the peanut. God said, now you're talking. Right on. <laughs> He ended up giving his talent for discovery more than 140 uses for the peanut. Helped to reshape and re-energize the weakened economy of the South and help millions of people. Everyone benefited from his God-shaped attitude about life and his willingness to allow God to mold his mind and thoughts from a spiritual perspective. One of the most important principles that you can learn in this connection is this. Follow the peace. Follow the peace. Listen to your conscience. Deal with the issues that Krishna brings to life. Don't put them off. The longer you put it off, the more difficult it's going to be. A lot of people, they wonder why they're not happy, why they're not blessed, why they can't sleep well at night. Often it's because their conscience is not clear. You cannot push down, ignore the higher self that God created you to be and expect to enjoy your life. When we refuse to accept his higher calling on our lives, we step outside of God's protection and favor. When we live with a guilty conscience, when we don't feel good about ourselves, we end up taking it out on other people. We end up living weak, defeated, discouraged, mediocre lives. It's because of that poison on the inside. On the other hand, if you choose to improve, Krishna will help you. Krishna says, I'm seated in the hearts of all living entities, and I destroy with the torchlight of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Krishna can put you back on the best path if you ask him. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Oh, Govinda, son of Nanda, though you're the one, second to none, my shining son, I'm heartbroken in the ocean of birth and death. Pull me out of this cruel blender, surrendered as an atom in the sweet splendor of your tender 
lotus feet. Krishna knows and guides each and every one of us in a unique, individual way. We're all at different levels, like birds fly higher and lower in the sky according to their capacities. We shouldn't waste time comparing ourselves to others. When we do that, we tend to make excuses. We tend to say, oh, my friends are all going to this movie. Everybody's going. What harm can it do? But a little alarm is going off inside. A voice is saying, you're better than that. Don't take trash willingly into your mind. You have to do what you feel good about in your heart. You have to hang out with people who are at your level or who challenge you to go to the next level. Distance yourself from those who are not going where you're going, who are not listening to God's advice. You may have to spend a few lonely nights, but remember, anything that Krishna or God asks you to do is for your own benefit. It's ultimately so he can release more and more favor into your life. In a lecture, Prabhupada talks about steps on the path of improvement. By yogic powers, one can control others. One can also travel in an astral form anywhere within the universe. Pretty far out, huh? You can actually hypnotize people and make them do what you want by yogic powers. You can travel in an astral form anywhere in the universe. By perfected yogic powers, you can choose the time and place of your death and your rebirth as well. Pretty impressive, huh? And yet Prabhupada says, but when one rises to the level of receiving and accepting and acting upon dictation from the Lord, that is the highest perfectional stage of life. Anytime Krishna dictates something to you, he also gives you the grace to do it. Prabhupada's guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, asked Prabhupada as a young man in 1926 to spread Krishna consciousness in the Western countries. Prabhupada was a young man, newly married, with kids, a job. He was unable to act in 1926. It wasn't, in fact, until 1965, almost 40 years later, that Prabhupada moved to fulfill the orders of his spiritual master. At that time, he no longer had wealth. He no longer had youth. He no longer had good health. He didn't have any connections in America, the land to which he came. By what power then, I ask you, did he achieve success in his great mission? He achieved success by grace. By grace of God, he persevered against all odds. By grace, he attracted 5,000 disciples, myself and Bhavavi among them. By grace, he established 108 temples. By grace, he translated 50 big books. By grace, he circled the earth 13 times. We are all gathered here this evening by the grace of God. And if we're honest, we'll admit that he has already abundantly blessed us even though we've pushed him far down on our list of priorities. Even though we have not particularly cared for his instructions to date, he's still shown us his goodness in a thousand different ways. Now, my question to you tonight is, would it not make the most perfect sense to try to improve, to try to dial him in better? Would it not make the most perfect sense to hunger, to hear his voice above the chatter, to thirst for his voice as a man would hanker after healing waters? Would it not make the most perfect sense to call out day and night for his grace fully within our lives? <clears throat> Krishna's guidance is always there. He never takes a coffee break. He never has a lapse of attention. He never stops wanting to bless us, but we have to do our part and take the first place. We have to be willing to declare, Lord, yes, this is for me. I want supernatural strength. I want to overcome all obstacles. I want to defeat all the enemies. I want to rise higher and higher. I want to take my obedience to the next level. I want myself and my loved ones to experience an unprecedented level of favor. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram.
Rama, Rama, Hari, Hari. Friends, Krishna has great things in store for you. Don't get stuck and settle for a life of mediocrity. Pay attention to the small, still voice on the inside. Deal with the issues that Krishna brings to light. Learn to obey quickly. How high you go in life is directly related to how fully you follow God's instructions. Krishna is preparing you for great things. He's going to take you further than you thought possible. Don't be surprised when he asks you to pick up your bags. He's already packed them with everything that you're going to need. He's going to take you places you could never go on your own in this life and next life. He'll promote you back to home, back to God. Thanks very much for your kind attention. If you receive the message, please say with me, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.